so thank you guys for coming today. And this is a panel that will have a um, discussion on the global development of uh, blockchain technology. So I will start off the panel by like self introduce. Um, so my name is Kum Peng and I'm a senior um, project manager of uh, United Technology Corporation. Uh, I'm not, to be honest with you, I'm not a blockchain veteran. I got into uh, blockchain and started paying attention last year since the price skyrocketed. Like, who don't like money, right? <laughs> <laughs> so, um, yeah, and I do um, read a lot on blogs and I do have my own social media on blockchain. So, yeah, that's basically my background. Uh, thank you guys for having me today. It's, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, my name is Josh Fraser. I'm one of the co founders of Origin Protocol. Um, we're a blockchain project for us looking at how to enable the sharing economy on the blockchain. So when I say sharing economy, I'm talking about companies like Uber and Airbnb and Fiverr and Postmates uh, or DD uh, or uh, these types of companies that allow people to uh, sell fractional usage of assets and services. And so we're creating the underlying technology for creating these types of decentralized and truly peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces. So we think a lot of these companies as peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces and really they're peer to giant corporate monopoly to peer. Uh, and we're making them truly peer-to-peer. -peer. And that's what we're working on at Origin. Hey. Hi, everyone. Uh, I'm Duran. I just gave a keynote speech about the Labulous open ecosystem. So currently I'm head of Labulous Labs. Labulous is a next generation public blockchain aiming for a continuously improving ecosystem. I'm also a founder of Atlas Protocol, which is a decentralized digital marketing protocol that is for token-based uh, scenarios. Yeah, thank you. Hi everyone, uh, my name is John. Um, I'm very glad to be here. Um, I'm Turkish, so the name and the uh, spelling and the pronunciation kind of don't match. But um, yeah, I'm one of the co-founders at Enigma. Uh, at Enigma, we're building a privacy protocol. Uh, the, the hypothesis we're playing with is blockchains are great, but everything on a blockchain is visible to everyone and that's not gonna fly with most of the applications that, that we're working with. So, so what we're building is we're creating uh, what we call secret contracts, which is very similar to a smart contract, where the inputs to a contract is not visible, but you can still do the computation and reach consensus. And we think this is going to be groundbreaking for applications that require any sort of data sensitivity. Hi, my name is Jim, and uh, I'm currently uh, chief of uh, blockchain architecture from uh, Huawei, Futurewave. And uh, I've been uh, can I kind of uh, get to work in the blockchain technology from late 2015 to early 16. That time we were there in the first uh, blockchain summit in Shanghai. So that's, I think just in less than two or three years, it's glad to see a lot of kind of uh, technologies and also the market can expand it. I would say explode it and this uh, market as well. And the reason we uh, think of was Huawei participating in this blockchain technology, people are wondering, where's Huawei focused on? Actually, uh, as I said, uh, we, uh, as Huawei wise, we uh, start to look into this technology wise from 2000, uh, early 2016. And then my team also uh, had early involvement with the uh, with, uh, High Pleasure team and the High Pleasure beta release. And then, actually, you, if you can see, it's, it's public information available. Huawei is a, public, uh, is a sponsor for the, for the High Pleasure as well. So, and also recently, Huawei uh, has uh, also Huawei has a, a public cloud to integrate those uh, uh, blockchain services as well. Yeah, thank you. All right, thank you, guys. Uh, so, as you can already hear and see, we have very diverse um, team here, a very diverse uh, panel, where people coming from startups and coming from corporations, and also covering different uh, aspects of blockchain. So. Please pay attention to the panel and write down questions. We will have a QA session at the end. And as I said, we have a diverse background, so we'll be able to handle a lot of questions. Okay, so I'll start with the first questions. So blockchain is still in the early stage, right? So we have probably a lot of uh, work we need to do. Um, so I just want to ask our great panelists, 
What do you guys think is like the most important, the most needed work that we need to do from your perspective? Anyone want to start? Just go ahead. Okay. Uh, let me put some comments behind this one. This question. This actually is a, it's a big question in the industry today. So uh, there's a lot. There's a in the main chain, the public chain. There's a famous one, the Bitcoin and the Ethereum. So people are wondering, is that two chain will be good enough for the future business expansion, for the future exchanges, for the old other businesses going around it? So I think definitely there's a lot of improvement around uh, Ethereum, also around Bitcoin as well. And, but uh, I think looking back today, in the real economy today, so there's no one kind of country can override the other kind of country, or there's no one e single economy model can overrun the other economic models. There's a lot of different kind of economic models are involving. So I, that's why I think there's more public chain will come in from the same logic to support different type of business model, to support different technologies involving with this kind of business as well. Anyone else want to add? Yeah, so there's, there's three big challenges we're, we're facing. One is uh, we've talked about a lot around uh, regulation, the government's um, trying to figure out what to do with this new technology and how it fits with very existing models. Uh, and in the United States, at least, we have very strong free speech laws. Um, but we're finding ourselves in this interesting place where um, code is now money and speech is just code. So uh, we live in a world now where uh, speech is highly protected, but money is, is, is controlled traditionally by governments. They, they want to say who you can send money to and when. Uh, but now we're, um, these two ideas are on a collision course. Uh, the idea of uh, your money is either um, it's just speech and it should be free, or it's uh, something that the government should control. And so I think that's one of the really big challenges um, that we've got to figure out and governments are going to wrestle with this, of, of where we're going to land uh, on that. Either free speech is going to uh, start being infringed upon or we're going to see uh, currency controls be relaxed. Um, and we have yet to see how that's going to play out. I think the second challenge is how we uh, scale blockchain technology. Um, both Bitcoin and Ethereum have scaling challenges. There's some great efforts being made on that around sharding, proof of stake, plasma, some other technologies. But the reality is, is this isn't a scale for the types of applications we, we really want to build on top of a blockchain. It's, if a blockchain is going to live up to its promise, um, we've got a lot of work to do on, on the scalability side. And then lastly, the, the biggest challenge is just how do we get enough people out there in the world uh, to understand how this technology works and to start believing in it and using it. Um, we still have, just like any business, uh, you need customers, you need users. Uh, and that's something that, um, you know, we probably have to figure out the first two things first before we're ready for that. Um, but that's certainly something we are going to have to figure out in time as well, is how do we get mainstream adoption of this type of technology? Go on. Hey. So uh, not far away from now, uh, Bitcoin dominates the whole token markets. People were wondering, do we still need all coins at the moment? Then we see the rising of Ethereum, the rising of smart contracts. Now, most of the dApps are developed on Ethereum. It, uh, is that uh, the end of blockchain technology? I don't think so. We believe uh, there will be more and more core cool and advanced technologies or new design philosophies introduced to the blockchain world. More business models will be introduced to the blockchain world. This is the, just the beginning. And I echo the sentiment. I think um, the winner of the scalability uh, challenge will be the, uh, um, the big benef winner for the, for the most part. Uh, we all know like nothing really works on Ethereum right now. Um, all, I mean, CryptoKitties is very fun, uh, but, but that's to the extent that we can go. And I think uh, it's, yeah, there's definitely space for different consensus, consensus models. There's definitely space for um, blockchains that can create trust, uh, but can operate in a, on a much uh, faster fashion. All right, thank you guys. Um, my next question is, um, actually uh, we know that blockchain gets a lot of hypes because uh, token sales. 
Actually, a lot of companies got a lot of money from their tokens. So apart from like incentivizing or creating economic incentives, um, do you think the tokenized economy is actually sustainable, uh, is a sustainable uh, revenue model? Can you think of any other revenue model? Uh, in other words, without ICO, what do you think is the true value of uh, blockchain? Yeah, I mean, we did a token sale, so um, it's it's a great way to fundraise. Um, I, I think no, but I mean, I think like that said, uh, there are a lot of projects that do not need a token, and they still do a token sale. And like you know, this is the market we're in, so you can't really blame people if there's money to be raised. Uh, but in our case, um, I think uh, fundamentally, token has to have an intrinsic value in the ecosystem that you're building, and that cannot be replaced by anything. Um, so what we're doing is, as mentioned, we're building this privacy protocol and uh, the way you need to spend gas in order to participate in the Ethereum ecosystem, you need to spend tokens in this ecosystem. So when you have a truly open source uh, model where everything is distributed and you, you really need to align incentives, then token is a must. Uh, but um, I don't think token is a good idea if you can just replace Ether with a token that, e that you own. Um, around the revenue model, I think what we're going to see is, um, I, I, I think it's, it's possible that most uh, companies uh, who are in this space uh, will at least, like we're doing privacy and, and privacy is something very relevant to corporations when they need to share data, uh, when they need to work on merged data sets. So in our case, I can see us having a, an enterprise solution uh, in, in a couple of years. Yeah, it's very easy to be skeptical of all the companies that are raising insane amounts of money and it doesn't feel like we deserve it. And it, and it makes it hard to take, take the space seriously. Uh, and I, I understand that. I think on the other side, if, if a lot of these companies and reason is happening, uh, I think there's a couple reasons. One is you're getting rid of the gatekeepers. You don't have to drive down Sand Hill Road and go pitch some guy in a suit. Uh, you, all you have to do is convince people, uh, everyday people all around the world to believe in your idea and if you can do that, then you can get funded. And that's partly what we're, we're seeing here and I think that's a good thing, getting rid of those, those gatekeepers, democratizing the process, that's a good thing. Uh, and if these companies and these projects are able to capitalize on uh, their vision, uh, it's going to take a lot of capital to, to go and do that. So um, I think, uh, well, it's easy to be skeptical. Uh, I think the, the token model uh, is really exciting. It's a great experiment. We'll see how it plays out, um, whether it can be sustainable or not. I think from uh, the, uh, Huawei are actually looking for a more like technology uh, level instead of from, from uh, tokenization. So, sorry, from token. I think token as a term is not new in this uh, industry, in the gaming industry. That's what's there uh, for a long time. But tokenization, I think, is kind of new in this way to pushing all the assets, vir uh, virtual or physical assets, into tokenized. Then to be able to exchange in the future as a great kind of a dynamics in the, in the, in the, in the economy. So that's the trend I think is makes sense. But however, in token now is kind of, kind of, uh, have a kind of blurry uh, ter uh, say definitions here today. For example, some kind of may define the token as kind of security. Some people define token as the utility coin, the token. Or somebody just use as kind of symbol represents some kind of uh, tangible assets. So those things will be getting clarified down the road with more practice in the, in the industry, I would say. And the same wise with more companies going to uh, earn the value, uh, the, their revenue, I think going back to the real economy wise, I think the either go to virtual or the physical world, then they are going to earn the revenue. So revenue going to impact the, vo uh, the world, that, that's where the, re the real value will bring in from those uh, com either startup or big companies here. Okay, so as a blockchain project, uh, we also did a token sale. I definitely, definitely think token sale is a great innovation. But just like any other innovations that happened in human history, uh, in the early stage, governance and the regulations are not ready yet. But that's not, that are not the reasons we should stop innovations. Even some um, token projects start uh, working 
stopped working after fundraising. That's not uh, an excuse that uh, we should abuse this technology. We need time to make the governance and uh, the regulations rules, but uh, we want to support this innovation. We want to support the advance of blockchain technology, and uh, we believe in blockchain. Okay. Thank you, guys. Um, so I think everyone knows like sharing economy. Actually, myself uh, use uh, Airbnb coming here, San Francisco, because hotel is just too expensive. So I decided last minute book Airbnb is like one third of the price of a hotel. So Josh, this is a question for you. So what do you think is like the main um, advantage of a blockchain empowered uh, decentralized economy? Like why do people use like say decentralized Airbnb against the traditional sharing economy model of Airbnb? Yeah, so there's three main things, uh, three main benefits we get from, from putting on the blockchain. First is when you cut out the middleman, the fees go with it. So uh, most sharing economy businesses take 20, 30% out of every transaction. Uh, if you have the buyer and seller meet on a smart contract that lives on a blockchain, uh, that those fees go away, right? And the, both the buyer and the seller can get a better price uh, for that transaction. Uh, the second benefit is we remove that single point of failure. So you're talking about Airbnb here in San Francisco. Um, getting an Airbnb in San Francisco today is harder than it was a couple months ago because the city of San Francisco just took f or, or find, started finding Airbnb uh, $1,000 a day for every unregistered listing there was in the city. And just like that, 4,000 listings were deleted from the Airbnb platform. And it's a great example of the dangers of having a single point of failure where a company um, is there, where either the government can come in with overzealous regulations, or sometimes these companies themselves like to pick and choose favorites and say who is and isn't welcome on their platform. And so the blockchain gives us a way to democratize that and have a, you know, enable more open and fair and transparent commerce um, than what we have in our current world. Uh, and the third thing is it enables us to create marketplaces and places that, um, and to pe and provide it to people who are currently not able to participate uh, in the global market. Billions of people on this planet are unable to use Uber, Airbnb, or any of these existing sharing economy marketplaces because all of those marketplaces have one simple requirement. You have to have a bank account. You have to have a credit card. Uh, and there's two billion people on this planet who are unbanked. But a growing number of them have access to an inexpensive smartphone. And if they don't, their friend does. And so for billions of people on this planet, their very first experience interacting with a digital marketplace of any kind is going to be on top of a decentralized marketplace like Origin. Thank you, Josh. Um, so we have, since blockchain is such a new technology, so we do have actually a lot of startups in the area I mean, of blockchain. Um, at the same time, I think a lot of corporations like Huawei is actually also looking into uh, blockchain. So this is a question for Jim. So from your perspective, like corporation, like Huawei's perspective, um, what's your like long-term plan or strategy towards blockchain technology, and how would you like to either collaborate or compete against uh, blo uh, startups in the blockchain industry? Yeah, I think uh, I will uh, put this one as two different questions. So the first one, I think uh, for Huawei, as, as we just uh, mentioned about, uh, we just announced this uh, blockchain service. The reason for that one, I think, uh, uh, let's look back in history. So the first uh, kind of uh, uh, cloud service released by Amazon in like, uh, 2006. And the Bitcoin kind of released out around 2009. So the time gap, more like three or four years, right? That time frame. But, uh, but look back, the current market, uh, the shares, the cloud is big. It's way bigger economic impact than wherever today is for blockchain. But I do not say blockchain is not, not hit a similar impact, it will. But just give time-wise, the, the two technology, the two emerging technology kind of burn, uh, get burst at almost the same time, they will work together 
down the road, integrate and evolve as same in the future as well. So that's where uh, I think long-term strategy is uh, in the case. So that's why in the, for now, from Huawei, we release out the blockchain service as the first uh, kind of a support of a blo uh, kind, of, kind of blockchain kind of a technology on top of cloud, uh, cloud uh, technologies. So definitely this, this is just the first practice, the more long way to go for, the, for, the f for the, these two great technologies going on further. And uh, regarding the, uh, the big and small companies, I think in general, this is more like a collaboration in the long term. Uh, and uh, for, for example, uh, the time we release out the blockchain service, we expect more company able to facilitate more small company able to build up their own blockchain service on top of this uh, public chain or, or kind of semi-public chain and use this fundamental infrastructure to enable their own innovations. So they do not have to carry such a big burden to set up their own private network or public uh, involved in the public uh, chain as well. And they can move on further into their own focus, either applications like uh, the the mention of Uber, uh, P2P Uber, or some other type of application will come in in the future. Right. Thank you, Jim. Um, so now I will, uh, we will switch our focus to uh, social media. As there's a request from the audience to talk about more like the uh, application of blockchain in uh, social media. So um, several um, social media companies like uh, uh, Facebook, currently uh, facing a lot of uh, pressure uh, in terms of uh, data, customer data privacy. Actually, Mark uh, Zuckerberg just testified in front of conference, uh, Congress for uh, the data privacy issue. So, um, Du Ran, um, can you tell us a little bit about how you think that blockchain technology can help to address this uh, customer data privacy issue and also um, since we know a lot of this uh, social media company are making huge money, um, our data, like we create data, they make money. Do you think it's possible that we have um, a, like sharing revenue model where the, uh, the creator of data and the company actually can share revenue? I know it's a loaded question, so you can just separate okay. them into two. Okay. Yeah, thanks, Quinn, for the question. This is a really good question. Uh, actually, we see there are two key challenges in today's uh, digital marketing industry. Firstly, is privacy. Second, is transparency. For privacy, everyone probably knows that uh, Facebook is criticized for not protecting uh, user data privacy well and being criticized heavily. Uh, but the truth is not only Facebook, all the big internet companies have those issues. All those big companies are black, black holes of user data. The user data comes to these companies and they extract all the user values from the data. As I work in Google and I know in these companies they build a very complicated machine learning models that leverage hundreds of thousands of user features. Users don't have control, don't have actual control of their data. That's also why recently in Europe the GDPR regulation is enforced. Any companies that don't follow the regulation, the GDPR regulation, we are fine heavily, but uh, that's, ju that's just uh, the push from the outside, from internal of those companies. They, their business model is based on the control of user data. So actually I think they don't have incentives to change themselves. And I think such business model is not sustainable in blockchain with the blockchain technology with the public key, private key pairs, users could have full control of their data. The blockchain is about uh, decentralized data ownership. With this technology, users can, could potentially share the revenues in the internet free, uh, freemium uh, ecosystem. The not only uh, publishers get shares in the digital marketing industry, the users 
who authorize their data to advertisers to publish should also be rewarded. Well, can I can I contract that uh, real quick? So, yeah. if you were to have a Facebook on blockchain, none of the things that we had would be addressed. Everything that you do would be visible to everyone. So, um, yes, Facebook may not be the one that's uh, monetizing your data, but the way blockchains are built, everything is visible to everyone. So, Cambridge Analytica would still could still have done this. Um, and also, if we're talking about like giving user control over their data and monetizing, like blockchains are great for correctness, but blockchains suck real bad for privacy. Mm -hmm. So um, I think it's misleading to say that with a blockchain you could actually replace Facebook because there are so many, uh, so many holes that you need to account for. Um, so I mean blockchain is very, very promising, but it's not the holy grail to everything. Yeah, yeah I do agree. There's no silver bullet and uh, um, blockchain cannot replace everything. But uh, I think blockchain could be a great addition to address some issues we see in the centralized internet world. And uh, regarding the transparency, the second part of the question, uh, I think blockchain also offers more possibilities. In today, in centralized ad networking, they can change the monetization rules whenever they want. When they, each time they change the some rules, some small publishers may run out of business. We don't think it is fair. In blockchain world, the rules can be open and the public in smart contract. And the community can have the rights to choose the fair smart contracts they want to use in that network. So we believe the blockchain technology could provide more possibilities to the internet. OK, that's all. All right, thank you, Duran. Um, all right, so. Um, as we um, like know that one of the main actually uh, future use case or scenario for blockchain applications actually um, uh, storage of um, uh, user identity or personal data. So my question is actually for um, John, not Ken. Just want to clarify again. Sorry for that. Um, so say if blockchain is a distributed ledger um, like that everyone can check what's on like blockchain. So how can we have this scenario where we store like personal and sensitive data on blockchain? Is that even possible? So what's your take on that? So that's a very, um, I think Fundamentally, it's not a good idea to put something sensitive on um, on blockchain because even if you encrypt it, uh, do whatever kind of transformation that you do, you leave your data out there uh, for people to potentially go after. You can always lose your keys. A lot of people are uh, bringing up quantum computing. I'm, I don't think it's, that's coming anytime soon, but there are all these problems. So you probably don't want to put your social security on uh, on the blockchain, even if it's encrypted. But what you can do, and like a lot of people are working towards it, is like they, there's a uh, there's a, a foundation called Digital Identity Foundation. They're uh, we're a part of them. They're trying to, or we're trying to together, build what the um, identity standards for this new web should be like. And um, one of the ideas that uh, that people play with is you never store these uh, extremely sensitive information on chain but you have either on your phone or some kind of trusted cloud device that you control that's where you store your information and then um, and then selectively share that information with applications for example um, if uh, a, a dap needs your your uh, birthday to prove that you're older than 21 to uh, to um, to participate in uh, one thing you can do is you can share with that application directly what your date of birth is if you want to be more uh, privacy centric, you can share a proof that you're older than 21 years old, but not share your date of birth uh, as is. Um, and, and I think the, the direction that we're going to go is um, people will start selectively sharing information um, so that, um, and, and never st store anything as sensitive as personal information on chain. 
Thank you, John. Um, so we had a really good and interesting discussion among the panelists. And I think the audience is probably very eager now. You guys probably already written down a page loaded with questions. So we'll now open the floor for Q&A. Um, we'll pass the mic. Just raise your hand for a question uh, one by one. And we only have 10 minutes, so just go for it. Uh, thank you for the <coughs> panel uh, discussion. Um, in terms of the token or coins, if you divide it per its utility into three categories, one is store of money, like uh, digital gold. Second is for exchange of value frequently, hence you need uh, performance and so on in exchanging um, you know, small and medium transactions. And third is in-platform token kind. It doesn't have to relate to a real real world money system, current money system per se, uh, but it already has value within that, just like gaming points and so on. So out of all three utilities and given this couple hundred uh, currencies in the, in the world so far, digital currencies, what's your view of how these currencies would evolve uh, in the future with respect to these categories? Well, one would dominate and or a few that has all ca uh, all characteristics and do all three functions or you think they will be segmented into different functions thank you yeah it's a great question uh, I think for store of value I think bitcoins as good as it gets uh, it doesn't have much competition in that category uh, as far as um, method of transfer if you think about it practically you don't want to have too many different tokens that you have to keep track of. When you travel, you're, you know, some of you are here from China, you came, you had to get US dollars as pain uh, to have to go through that. Same is true online, you don't want to have too many different currencies floating around or else uh, it's kind of annoying. I think it's the last category where there's the most room, which is you, where that token is providing real utility for the platform. You can think of it more akin to an API key on a service that we see today. Um, we have a lot of work to do around how that works, how we figure out the convenience around it. Um, because if you need a different token for each different service that you're using, and by the way, some of these layer on top of each other, um, where if you're using Origin, maybe you need a Filecoin token, and maybe you, uh, you know, for file storage, maybe you need an Enigma uh, token for uh, private data um, that's being stored on the Origin platform. We need to figure out some way to um, hide the, the friction from that. Um, from the end user. So uh, I think, you know, store of value, Bitcoin, uh, m unit of transfer, Ethereum, Bitcoin, a couple of the top currencies, maybe Zcash, Monero, some of the privacy coins are really useful. Uh, and then beyond that, I think we're looking at largely utility tokens, but then, you know, we didn't talk about security tokens, but that's also an interesting uh, aspect as well. And I think to build on that, um, one thing that's very interesting is as these utility tokens become very valuable, the utility just disappears. Like just look at Bitcoin, right? I have to spend more money in fees to send $25 worth of Bitcoin. The same is right now happening with Ethereum. So, so then it creates a dilemma at, at, at I mean, you start as a, as a utility token, but it becomes so expensive that you can't use the utility anymore. So I think there's also room for um, these uh, stable coins that are pegged to, uh, currencies to keep the cost, cost uh, stable, but it is, I think it's an interesting uh, evolution. Uh, thanks for the panel discussion. Uh, I want to ask that, the, uh, what is the uh, big difference between the distributed ledger technology and the blockchain? Uh, what is the main f uh, feature of the uh, decentralized internet in the next generation? Thank you. Okay, yes, yeah, that's a very good question. Uh, for blockchain, I will just talk about the uh, public blockchain. There's a difference between public blockchain and the uh, distributed ledger. Distributed ledger is uh, just a technology. For public blockchain, we think there are three key elements, technology, community, and the token. The community-wise, uh, uh, internet products also have a uh, com community. Maybe that's a centralized community. But the token makes the public blockchain very special. 
it makes the public blockchain not uh, just an economy, but also an organism that can evolve. Yeah, that's just like the question asked previously, what's the future of those tokens? Uh, there could be many more possibilities. I think uh, uh, go back to the difference between blockchain versus the distributed ledger. The key part is I think in the blockchain there are three uh, we call fundamental pillars. So one is the distributed ledger, and one another one is consensus. Another one we call the smart contract or programming language. So those are three from technology wise are three important uh, pillars. It's so not necessary to say oh, a distributed ledger is the only technology one to represent blockchain. So that's from the technology wise. And uh, for the, with this uh, with distribution technology going on in the, uh, down the road, I think uh, that's uh, like I mentioned again, the cloud and the, uh, those blockchain technology will merge uh, somehow to impact further uh, with each other back to those uh, uh, we call distributed internet in the future. <laughs>